Shalom, my friends from here in Israel. Many of you have wanted to see a synagogue. So we are inside a synagogue that I'm going to show you around and we're going to talk about prayer and all the different things. But first, I want to invite you to sign up for our Journey Home Tour to Israel, which is going to be in December. You have a link in the video that you could follow. But come to Israel with my father, Rabbi Eckstein, and me. We will be on this tour. We'll be going to Jerusalem, to Tiberias. We'll be uh, celebrating Shabbat. Shabbat, the Sabbath with my family, it's going to be amazing, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So if you've never been to Israel, this is the time. And if you have been to Israel, come back with us. It will be very different and it will be inspiring, informative, and wonderful. Back to the synagogue. Welcome to a synagogue in Israel. This is a place where we come to pray basically all day. Traditional Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, has three prayers a day. Shacharis, which is the morning prayers, Mincha, which is afternoon prayers, and Marv, which is the evening prayers. And these are based on the sacrifices from the temple. They used to bring t sacrifices all day during the time of the first and second temple, but today we don't have sacrifices. And so the sages implemented prayer in place of sacrifices. So we have a prayer that we say for Thanksgiving. We say a prayer that we say asking for forgiveness. We have a prayer for happy times, sad times, for everything you could think of, there is a prayer to go with it, just as they used to bring sacrifices. But there are the consistent prayers of morning, afternoon, and evening. And it's here in the synagogue that the community gets together, both men and women, to pray. Now, there are a lot of differences between an Orthodox synagogue or a conservative and reformed synagogue. This is an Orthodox synagogue, and one of the main differences that you could see is right here, you could see the separation, or what is called a mechitza. You could see that this could be opened and closed, but this is the separation between the men and the women's side. The women sit over here, the men sit over here during times of prayer. Now, why would you do this? You do this because when you come into a house of prayer, you want to remember it's not a time to socialize. It's not a time to be talking and catching up and sitting with your husband and sitting with your friends. It's a time to pray to God. So once you leave the sanctuary, you could be talking and celebrating and catching up. But inside the sanctuary is a time that we remember we're focused on prayer and on God. These are all the different seats uh, in the synagogue. And in fact, to have a minyan, in order to start the prayer service, you have 10 men that are gathered here. So three times a day, you'll have at least 10 men that are gathered here. Now, where do you get the idea of 10 men from? You get it from when Moses sent out the spies to look and uh, look at what was happening in Israel and report back to him, he sent 10 men. From that, we get a quorum. We see that in order to pray and go out and search and accomplish, we need 10 men together. And so in Orthodox synagogues, is counted as 10 men. And in conservative and reformed synagogues, you, they count the women for this quarry of 10 as well. This is called the bama, the bima. This is where the person comes up to pray. The person who's leading the prayer service comes up here. And this is where we put the Torah scrolls when we read the Torah scrolls. This is where you're facing the Aaron, you're facing the Ark where the Torah scrolls are kept. And uh, across the world, you face Jerusalem. Now here in Israel, uh, you also face Jerusalem. Right now I'm in northern Israel, and so we're facing south. We're facing Jerusalem when we pray. In Jerusalem, what do you do? In Jerusalem, you face towards the Kotel, the western wall, where the temple was. And that's why we say that it's the holiest place in the world. So during prayer services, uh, they'll stand up here, and they'll, there'll be one person leading the services. This is the Bama. This is the place where the person who's leaving the services stands, everyone else sits around, and here we see that it says, Baruch Hashem Hamborach, Baruch Hashem Hamborach Leolam Ba'ed. It says, blessed are you, our blessed God, and then the community answers, blessed are you, our blessed God, forever. All across the synagogue, you could, say, you could see that there's different books, different prayer books, different Bibles with different translation, uh, and, and so you could tap into that wherever you are. All on the walls are different prayers. Over here you see, this is the eternal flame. A synagogue represents the temple. 
every synagogue is a, a, a mini temple for the local Jewish community, that when you enter the synagogue, it's kind of like entering the temple. And so we have a lot of different remnants of the temple in the synagogue. One of them is the Ner Tamid, the eternal flame, that in the synagogue, it is always lit. Here is where we keep the Torah scrolls, called the Aron HaKodesh, the holy ark where we keep the Torah scrolls. And you can see it's covered by a beautiful, beautiful cloth and it's ordered in order to keep the sanctity of it. That we don't want it just to be revealed. We only open this when we're taking out the Torah scrolls to read them. And you see that on this one it says, Ki metzion Torah udbar Hashem Yerushalayim. From Zion came out the words of the Bible and God spoke from Jerusalem. So even here in Israel, when we're not in Jerusalem, our hearts are towards Jerusalem where the temple once stood and we believe will stand again. You can see all across here, here we have all different names of uh, the fruits of Israel. We have all different uh, names of the different Shvatim. There are all different names of the tribes of Israel and, uh, and the attributes of faith surround us here so that we always remember You'll often see in a synagogue, it will say, da lifne Remember in front of who you stand. That when you're standing in a holy space, never forget that you're standing in front of God. You could also see in this specific synagogue, uh, the women's section is also up on top. So the women could see what's going on. You could see there that stained glass that are for the fruits of Israel, as I was saying. There's wheat, there's barley, there's grapes. Figs, there's rimon, pomegranate, zait, uh, which means olives, and tamar, which means dates. Everything here in the synagogue represents two things. It represents uh, the temple that once stood, and it represents Israel and the scriptures. And when you're in the sanctuary, you truly are standing on holy ground. So once again, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to Israel. Come see the synagogues that line every street of Israel. Come see the people of Israel. Come see the fellowship projects in Israel. Come walk the uh, paths of our forefathers. Join me and my father, Rabbi Eckstein, in December for the Journey Home Tour, which we did for you so that you can come to Israel. So follow the link. Get more information and I will see you soon here in Israel. Shalom.